this is a very uh, quick video uh, going through a tutorial I prepared for the students um, using the uh, LabBot PLC trainer with the Micrologix 1100 series B. Um, you can see all the, the uh, specifics on this first page of this document. Now I'm just going to basically scroll through this document so that I I basically have a a video equivalent of this um, tutorial. Um, and uh, later on, if I find there's any corrections I need to make, I can mark those up with annotations. Um, and I've, I've got quite a few other supporting videos um, in relation to this subject and, and constantly adding to those. So I'll just go through that. Uh, this is the desktop screen or start screen and actually shows you the PLC trainer uh, hooked up to some traffic lights. Uh, this is just an example that we're not actually going to be programming the traffic lights in this tutorial. So just stepping through, um, now bear in mind in this tutorial all the software is already installed. Uh, I'm not covering the installation of software in this video, I'm just covering the actual uh, use of the software to create a program and download it and test it. So starting RS Logix 500, going for new, uh, selecting the PLC which is 1100 Series B and you'll notice that down here we've got a driver. Um, now once you've uh, installed RS Linux Classics, Linux Classics, that's the communication software, uh, you can go in there and you can add a driver um, depending on the PLC that you're controlling and this is the driver here. When, when you create a new file it will automatically pick that up. It's, I found that to be the easiest way to do it. And I do another video where I talk about that RS Lynx Classic software. Um, scrolling down, so it's got a rung there. That's the rung zero. Um, and you can see uh, various components of the PLC including the data registers. Um, and in here I think the uh, either the function file or the pro process of state, I think it's the function file, you can access uh, things like uh, pulse width modulation settings uh, for the PWM function block. But that's another sub. So it's our screen. All right, let's come back. So Okay, just go back a minute. Now, basically, I've shown you that I'm, I'm, I'm running the mouse up to the user block at the top here um, and selecting a new rung. And, and you've seen the new rung pops up there. And it's pushed the first one to number one, and the new rung is now zero, zero. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of E's there, which sort of means editing. Scroll down. Um, I don't think I'm going to undo that. Ah, okay, now this is the ladder diagram um, for the program I'm going to write. I basically got this out of the uh, Lab Vault uh, student manual. And you can see there's a, a combination of circuits here. We've got uh, two input contacts in series, must be in series, both activated to uh, energize this output uh, on uh, zero. Uh, these two can be in parallel, so that's basically an OR situation. So the first one is AND, this one is OR. This one or this one will energize this coil. Next one, any three of these inputs, uh, they're in parallel, so any of those can activate that. That's a normally closed contact. So only when that's open, that switch is opened, will that open. Uh, sorry, when that switch is closed, that will open. Otherwise, when it's open, it stays shut. And when all that's uh, true, then it will energize these two coils here and in. So it's just showing you different combinations of, of logic. Um, now I'm going up here and adding a um, examine if closed. 
and I've got that I'm actually dragging that down with my mouse and you've got to uh, bring it near one of these little red squares and when you do they'll change color to green so you can see there I brought it near there it's gone to green that means I can drop that block onto that green block there um, once I've done that it's completed and there's a question mark there which means it's asking for some information <coughs> So you double click on there and you can add the input. So input 0 uh, backslash 0 which means the uh, first bit in that data array. Now here you got the input data file I1 input. If you double click on that you'll see um, uh, five different um, arrays. The last two are analog inputs. The first three are digital. And actually only, uh, for digital you only actually use the first one and that's I0. So it's I0, I1, I2, I3, I4. Enter a description. Uh, and that description will be connected to that input. There you go. Uh, adding the second one. So you can see there's zero bit, first bit. Output if energized, so I've gone up there and selected one of these, dragged it across, and dropped it on there. And I've given it output 0 backslash 0. So output array 0, bit number 0. And you can see the output array data file over here on the left hand side. Verify wrong. You can verify each wrong individually. You can also verify the whole file by going up to the top here with a little square with the green tick and verify project. So you can verify little bits or the whole thing together. You notice that once I've verified it, all these E's have disappeared. Right? So they've all gone there, so that's been verified. It's OK. Uh, the programming is OK. There's no errors. And you see the comment down there. There's a column of E's have left. Now, this is just showing an example of an error. So I haven't applied a description to this output coil. And you can see there, rung zero error, operand is not entered. So there's no description there. Okay, so back on the original thing that's been verified, add a new rung. And there's a new rung there. New rung is number one. The last one has now been renumbered as number two. Okay. I'm not sure why that's blank, but anyway. So, so I've gone ahead and I've just dropped those um, uh, inputs and outputs there. Now, I haven't put any description there, and maybe later in this tutorial I will actually um, rename those. Okay, insert new branch. Enter a description. So it looks like I've actually gone back now and added some descriptions there. Input 1, input 0, and that really helps you later on when you go back to your program and try and understand what you've done. Save, yeah, it's a good idea to save your file. And set new branch. So let's go back there, see? I've obviously gone right click on there. When you right click it gives you that option insert new branch. And it's put a branch there in that circuit and push that one along alongside. Now so you can click on that there, that input, and drag it across and drop it into there. So if I click on it you can see the little green box is highlighted. I can drop it onto that green box. I could have dropped it there or there or there, anywhere I wanted, but that's where I wanted it to go. And now it's in there and do the second one, grab another uh, coil and drop it there. So I'm basically using the same inputs but in a different configuration as per the original diagram. Okay, now I've added an extra rung and done the same thing. So I'm skipping a few steps now because you should have enough skills to do all this now. 
adding one in series there. So you can see up here, normally close, normally open. Add those. Edit comment. So basically I can add a comment to that rung. Edit comment. So right click on the rung, right click on there, edit comment, and add something that will help me understand what's happening here. And there you go, there's the comment. Okay, now I'm doing the same for the rest of them. And just remember, you can also get help. So up here, help. And on the internet, you can get, you can download a PDF document instruction set for a Micrologics 1100, which has lots of information too. So you can go in here and you can do a search for the gates you want to learn about. So examine, examine if open, and there's a kind of an example. See, there's a sample there and uh, it highlights when you're actually running it it will go green like that save it again verify the file let's go up there and verify it now I've clicked here download downloading program Okay, so when you when you download it, you've got to make sure that the PLC is actually in program mode, otherwise it won't accept a new program. So remember, this tutorial assumes that you've already sorted out the communications uh, between the uh, between the programmer and the PLC. That's already sorted out. Um, so you go to download, and it says it's in run mode. Switch to program mode and to continue. So you go on here, this is the um, uh, front panel of the PLC and you just scroll down to mode switch, int, go OK and select program and just go OK. Right, so now you can go back here and just go OK and it should say, OK we've got configuration of velocity communication, do you want to go online, yes and you go, so we've gone online, now runs because we want to test the program, currently in program, so again you've got to go back to the PLC now, because you've programmed it, now you've got to change it to run. So go down to run, now you can't actually see it there, but that's meant to have run on there. Um, there you go, run, try it again, and you can see now it's in run. Now what happens, although the graphics is not showing because it's a screen capture, this icon here actually spins around when it's running. Um, so you can see these two are, are, are green color, which means they're all running. It's all good. It's good to go. Now this actually goes back to originally uh, relay ladder logic was done with actual physical relays, and this used to be um, uh, your power supply here to the uh, to the, the the hardware. So it's like. Hang on a sec. Um, just excuse me for a minute. I've had to pause it, pause this video. And I'm just making sure that it's it's recording again. I think it is. Um, so I'll just go view full screen mode. Um, so basically, once you've finished written your program, you're ready to go online. And I'll just get up to where I was before. I think it was. I think it was around here. And excuse me if I've lost place a bit here. Um, so test run, okay, and this is a shot of the uh, front of the trainer and in the center here you've got your inputs and on the right hand side you've got outputs and the bottom is the power supply, 24 volt power supply rated at 2 point, I think it's 2.5 amps, uh, two terminals for negative, two terminals for positive. And left hand side you've got some toggle switches which can be used as digital inputs. 
Um, incidentally, you can see there's a little uh, some LEDs, red, yellow, and green, uh, two sets, and they represent traffic lights. So they actually glow as these outputs are driven high. Um, the first two OB z outputs zero backslash or O backslash zero and o, o backslash one. They are um, switched from a relay, which uh, is rated at 2.4 amps, and it switches 24 volts. The third one is a high-speed FET, uh, which uh, is 24 volts again and rated at 0.1 amp. And the next three are rated at 24 volts, and I think that's 2.5 amps each. Okay, so we just go down. Now I've hooked up all these uh, inputs and the top left hand corner you can actually make out the analog inputs. There's two analog inputs and there's the common uh, rated at 0 to 10 volts. <coughs> and you can also see the push buttons down the bottom there. Uh, these can also form inputs to your uh, input channels. Hang on a second. Alright, back again. The advantage of making videos after hours is you don't have any distractions. Um, okay, next video, just showing the connections between the switches and the inputs. Um, and you'll see this is obviously running the program now. Uh, closing this uh, input switch 1 activates uh, output 1 LED according to the program. Scroll down further, and you can actually see that. Uh, see, this is in run mode, and you can see I've closed switch one. So on on output zero, it's not actually on because this first one requires the two anded, both that one and that one switched on for this to turn on. Whereas the second one is an all function, so this all this will turn this light on. So the logic is proven to be correct there. Um, you can see the green light is showing that those things are uh, active. And if I click on the data file, uh, I1 input data file, you can see um, inputs uh, 0 and 5 are high. Now the reason for that is if I go back, that one's high, you'll probably find that this one here is actually hooked into the normally, normally closed button. It says normally closed, going in there, so that's a high. So you see here, that bit there is high, so both of them are high. And these one numbers down here, they're just the analog inputs, which we're not using in this experiment. Um, and I've just gone through and highlighted that, see so that I semicolon zero backslash zero, input zero. And uh, input zero is just a description that I've given that input. You can see I've typed in that description there. And the second one, I semicolon zero backslash eight, which is not used in this circuit. And I've clicked on the output uh, data file array, and uh, you can see the uh, second bit is um, active. A oh, yeah, zero semicolon zero backslash one output one. Now I've jumped down. You can see I've thrown two switches on, and both these lights have come on. And you can see that's replicated in this. Uh, Diagram. So that's the beauty about being in run mode is you can test your uh, program with a PLC or emulator if you're using an emulator uh, and you can see the results here coming up. And then there's the last one where I'm guessing uh, yeah, we've got all the switches activated on and you can see the corresponding result there. Um, so what I've probably done here is um, went to save the file. Uh, yeah, and it said, do you want to upload the data table values? Yeah, fine, go ahead, upload. So I've saved it, and that's it. Now this last page is just showing you my um, my web page, which you would be already viewing at to see this video. And it's um, a video talking about setting up network connections between the PLC and the PC, which is um, pretty useful information, I think. And that's it.